Welcome back to SHOT Show 2017. We're here in the Brownells booth on day four, and this is our last segment today, and I believe we saved the best till last. With me is John Paul from JP Enterprises, and if you know anything about AR-15s, you know they make the best equipment out there. John Paul, welcome aboard. Steve, thanks so much for having me. You, the Brownells has been just a tremendous partner over the years, and I can't tell you how instrumental you guys have been in our success, so we really appreciate that. Uh, your stuff pretty much sells itself. you got the reputation. Well, I... tapping into your organization, it. it just has expanded and, and uh, you know, the, our capability and, our, our, and to reach the audience out there. Uh, today, you know, I brought a long uh, turnkey package here. I've we're... been staring at this ever <laughs> since you put it up here. I haven't seen this gun before, yeah. and it is magnificent in person. Yeah, this is a turnkey package that we're really directing into the uh, LE market, of course. Uh, it's what we hit, it has a package in it we call Suppressor Ready. And also, of course, it makes a great PRS package. And it certainly could be a great long range hunter. So, multiple applications. And I'm going to kind of go over this as a complete system. But then, of course, we're going to go and look at it as a breakdown because, as you know, uh, we're all about the parts. We build complete rifles, but we also look at it as a tree that breaks down into separate components that the home builder and the gunsmith can use to upgrade your rifle and really build fantastic rifles your own using all these great parts out there by various vendors. So this is one of our LRP-07s, Long Range Precision Rifle of 2007. Our last digit in our model number usually indicates the year of release. This has got our M uh, upper receiver, which has the dust cover and forward assist, you know, directed into the military law enforcement market. And a lot of hunters prefer that to keep the uh, debris and uh, snow and ice out of the receivers. So, yeah, you notice it does not have a top charge handle on it. It's a, a side charger. And uh, the reason we've done that is when I first started using these rifles, uh, I found that the top charge on a 308 rifle was, in my opinion, kind of the Achilles heel of that entire package. The stroke is long, the spring is very hard. A lot of women with not quite the upper body strength actually have a problem with that whole system. Not to mention that if you had to clear a stuck case, that long charging handle sticking out of the upper receiver, very easy to bend in that process. And once you bend that charging handle, that rifle is out of service. Uh, the side charge system, ergonomically better, it's also much more robust. It's a folding, non-reciprocating system. Plus, now, anyone that's ever shot an FAL, they know this is the way to go. This is really the slick, the slick way to run your rifle. Great. I, if I have to clear the rifle or charge it, I don't even have to relinquish my, my cheek weld. And guess what? If I'm running uh, subsonic sub ammunition for a suppressor that is non-cycling, now all of a sudden I have a very fast straight pull manual rifle. So you see that the, the utility of that is uh, multifold. You know, you can do some things that you can't do with other systems. Now, uh, this comes as a package, including the bipod, including one of our 30 or 34 millimeter scope mounts uh, as uh, the, the end user would choose. And uh, it's coming with this Magpul stock. You see we've got a, a, a butt plate extender out here which allows you to have a higher or lower position and cast off, cast on, so it's a custom tunable butt plate we've included. Nice. This particular stock did not come with a sling cup. We've, we've included that on this. But let's just talk about this suppressor ready application I'm talking about here. Uh, running suppressors on gas guns is, is problematic. Most of you know that gas guns really don't like suppressors, and in particular, the no, detachable don't. can issue going on here because you've got to solve two main problems. You've got the bolt regulation issue. In other words, bolt velocity regulation. When you put the can on a rifle, all of a sudden, just like a muffler on a car, you've increased back pressure on the system. The port pressure goes up, and now it drastically increases your overall bolt velocity, and that causes a lot of bad things like bolt ride over malfunctions, uh, extractor breakage. You can even rip the cases, the rims off of cases. So a lot of reliability issues come from the can being included in the system when it's set up really to run without that. So mass regulation. So what we've done here is we've come up with a completely new type of carrier to coincide with our captured spring system. A lot of you know are already familiar with this part. Yes. This has been our, another game changer part, a completely encapsulated buffer system that isolates the spring from the, the buffer tube itself, completely eliminating all that twang and that spring noise that you're used to hearing. A lot of these guns sound like 
a spoon on a cheese grater. That drives me nuts. I've always <laughs> had to come up with a solution with this. This was the ultimate solution. Plus, it's variable mass. We can change these buffers for the application, the, the buffer components on your. Here, when we're running the suppressor, we want to have mass regulation. In other words, we're going to be able to mitigate the bolt velocity, keep the bolt velocity in a sweet, sweet spot by adding as much mass as we can to the overall system. So we've got it here, and we got it on this new suppressor carrier. So you can okay. see how we've mounted these reciprocating masses right. on the carrier. So the whole thing in conjunction with itself doubles not only the mass, but the, the reciprocating mass, the buffering dead blow so, hammer effect. And that's really the key here too, because first off, we're mass regulating, solving this bolt velocity problem. Right. So you would uh, shoot the rifle with the can off and adjust the last round lockback. All of our all of our systems have adjustable gas blocks, by the way. We pioneered that. We were the first, yes. and uh, everybody's copied it. At first, everybody always wondered, like, what are we doing that? Oh, they work <laughs> very well. I've got them on guns. Yeah, they didn't understand that the key to reliability is keeping the bolt velocity in that sweet spot. Uh, and of course, the fringe benefit of that is once you mass, once you regulate the bolt velocity, you've also drastically reduced the imp the recoil impulse due to excessive excessive bolt velocity and all that kinetic energy be extended right. in the spot into the right. stock into your shoulder. So now we run the rifle, can off, and we adjust the last round lockback with the system. And now with with the end of your choice, now when you put the suppressor on, we will mass regulate that bolt velocity and it will stay in the sweet spot as I'm talking about. And you aren't going to have the reliability issues and the parts breakage issues that are typically associated with running suppressors on, on semi-automatic gas operated rifles. The second major issue is the fouling issue. You know that when you run oh, a suppressor yes. on these things, yes. as soon as that cartridge has broken free of the chambers in the extraction process, as soon as the seal is broken, all that residual Everything pressure in the can is back. running right back down that barrel, yep. and it's fouling the chamber around the cartridge, it's fouling the upper receiver, it's fouling the bolt carry group. It's filling your upper receiver with, with crud. Just, <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> and if you've ever watched high-speed photography of these good guns, you know that there is something called the bolt bounce phenomenon. Mm -hmm. What happens is the bolt carrier comes in and comes in the battery, and the carrier just slaps the back of the extension piece and it goes boom, boom, yep. boom. So it'll, that's what it'll, it all, usually there's about a three, three time cycle, you know, in that it'll go pop, pop, pop. And the problem is that when the receiver gets fouled to a certain point, well, it hits, it bounces, it stays out. Now you got a failure, a failure to fire issue because your hammer right. drops, you hear a click because right. the gun is no longer in battery. Well, with this system in here doubling that dead blow hammer effect, it literally hammers past that Gives it one more little tap. And it just closes and it never bounces back out. Under high speed photography, Sweet. we completely eliminated the bolt, bolt bounce issue in this system. And so it allows the duty cycle of the weapon with the can on to be drastically expanded without having to do your, your maintenance okay. on it. So we really, we're really excited about that because it solved these issues. And as you know, my suppressors have just you know, uh, proliferated. Yes, <laughs> I mean, this is just just right. beginning to happen. Yes. I mean, we're just seeing the tip of it now. Exactly. So, yeah, the, and, and we're, and of course, let, pending legislation, you know, we're looking at possibly right. the ease of getting suppressors now, and, and suppressors make so much sense on, on so many levels. So, I could, I could like, right. I'd like to keep the rest of my hearing what little is left exactly. of it. Exactly. <laughs> there isn't so, a whole lot left. So this is a system we make not only for the large format rifles, but also for the small format mm -hmm. rifles. In the small format rifle, it not only does all this stuff I'm talking about in terms of uh, uh, suppressor application, but you take like your ultra short SBRs and 5.56, five, like your 10 and a half inch barrels. Those, are, those rifles are notorious unreli un, notoriously unreliable. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think they work, but I can tell you right now that most of them are right on the edge of the envelope of not working. Uh-huh, <laughs> yep, I believe it. And part I of the problem is, is the whole compromise you're making in SBRs between port position and uh, relative to muzzle, relative to chamber. It's kind of like a, a bad a bad marriage that you've got going uh, on there. Yeah. Too That's close to the chamber, analogy. too close to the muzzle. So you almost have to overgas them to get them to work. And now you've overgassed them. And then of course, due to the wide range of port pressures and various ammunition out there, they become very ammunition sensitive. True. So there again, the combination of being able to regulate the port pressure via uh, adjustable gas block, and then this combination of these uh, mass regulation and extra buffering capacity, and all of a sudden you can get a much more rel reliable uh, SBR much configuration. Much smoother running too. That, easier that, that on the too. shooter, right. easier on the gun, easier on the brass, everything. So that is all about like what we brought in these new components to the, to the operating system. Now let's talk about another little subtlety here, which, uh, you know, as you know, at JP we're all about splitting the hairs. 
and we're just willing to split hairs that no one else is willing to split. I know, I know. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. Because I'm a, as a professional shooter, I look at everything we do as a solution to my problems. I know that you've got these same problems, right. and uh, that has really been key of our success. Is we, you know, we're solving problems that we know that everybody has, and one of those issues is upper lower receiver fit. We're, we're kind of fanatics about this. I um, mean, obviously our, our receivers are made to extremely high quality, but he can only toll the tolerances of the upper and lower to a certain extent. And we wanted to perfect that fit to the next level because the fitment of the upper and lower is also, is kind of key into the final sure. accuracy capability of the rifle. The rifle really is the upper, but how that upper attaches and binds to the lower, just like a bolt gun, action system in a chassis that's critical is how you it, got a tension it affects the torque the, in there. It right. affects the interface between the gun and the shooter. So, you know, what we found is that uh, they can be too loose, that's not good obviously, but they can also be too tight. There's a certain sweet spot in terms of the fitment of the upper and lower. So, we used to have this thing called the tension pin. You yes. probably sold yep, them. we carried those. We have sold, yep. I don't know how many thousands. A couple of, of train things. loads, I don't know. <laughs> right. But one thing I didn't like about that part personally was that you couldn't crack your rifle open in an emergency to get that dump need, primer out of there. Tool. I mean, I, I've seen guys save a stage where they had a drop primer in a gun and literally had to partially disassemble the gun and dump stuff out of yep. the lower and, yep. and get back in the game. And guess what? In a real world, somebody's shooting back at you, that's what you're doing. Right. <laughs> you are going right. to do anything you can to survive and make this thing work. So I, I wanted to be able to have the, a push pin system that still could be taken out, mallet free, in other words, a tool free system of disassembly, but yet provide exactly that upper lower fitment that we were looking well, for. This one's plenty tight and I yep. just watched you yep. push the pin yep. with your so thumb and no problem. That, that was exactly it. I want any play in this thing, but I don't want any over tensioning where the receivers bind and so we actually have now uh, takedown pins front and rear for both large and small frame platforms mm -hmm. that have nominal pl and plus one and minus one on either side so then you can come up with a combination of these things that exactly fits and gives oh, you exactly nice. that fitment you're looking right. for good example too is like let's say you had your rifle seracoded right and all right. of a sudden you've got that stuff in the pinholes the rifle fits too tight this is another solution to correct that fitment there again so yeah, here's what, I, what I'm looking for is I want to be able to pull this thing out with maybe the, my, a tip of a bullet or something and get into that receiver, but yet I want it to lock together with absolutely no play, no binding. Solid as a rock. Now, these pins also are indicated as to what they are, so you can identify the size of them okay. when you use them. Plus they're, they're QPQ nitrate coated, so they they got a rock hard coating on them that has a very high lubricity. So uh, really uh, all, all around, you know, much um, a really great upgrade to the kind of pins that people are used to using, well, not to mention they're centerless ground to precise dimensions. To, to a machinist like me, it's like having uh, gauge pins holding your AR together. There you go. Really that's nice exactly gauge what we're pins. doing. That's a good yeah. analogy. See, and that, that, that's what my son, who's our, our head engineer, he has a good word for this kind of stuff. He called it a mission impossible project because uh, even our vendors were kind of, are you crazy? Oh, you know? man. <laughs> but we, and yet here we, we are. We're doing it. Yeah, right. We're doing it. <laughs> so now let, let's get on to... Uh, a little bit of functionality here. You, you notice I got this crazy thing out right. here, and this is another idea. I've Until you explained that to me, I, I, I had yeah. no I, idea what I've that had was. for uh, over a year, and I wanted to do this. And I, as you know, I, I mean, I do a lot of competitive shooting, and I've gotten further and further into uh, precision shooting. And typically, I'm shooting at bipods all the time. Well, you know, the bipod interjects a variable which you have to control. You have to load that bipod just right. You have to be thinking about what you're doing with that bipod. And uh, uh, I started to use this sled on a set of bags, and uh, I realized that it took that variable out and improved my consistency off the bench first off, and then in competition. And recently, I, I was telling Steve here that uh, I, I shot our team challenge, uh, a, a two-man team event we have out at the Blue Steel Ranch, our training facility out in New Mexico. And I didn't use a bipod the entire three days of that event. And this is a, a natural terrain event where we're shooting out a natural terrain off of right. whatever rocks. And I'd be branches. naturally thinking bipod. Yep, in, a re, in, in the real world environment. And I've always shot, as, you know, in the past, my goal was to use the bipod every chance I got. Right, right. Now, I got away from it completely. And I have my front pillow, my rear pillow. And if I need it, I even stack my pack in there. And, mm -hmm. and between those three items, I was able to build every position out there I needed to build, wow. and in the fa much faster than I would if I tried to deploy the bipod, mess with the length of the legs, blah blah blah. Sure. You know, so that just you know, I, I did actually some of the best shooting I've ever done using that system. Now you can lock this thing into place on anybody's rail, 
comes with some uh, hardware to allow you to clamp it in. Yeah. Or on our, our handguard systems, you can screw it into place if you want to have a stationary position. But I found a, the way I wanted to use it was to have this thing float. So I put a couple of pieces of two inch rail down here. I could float it anywhere I want in order to build a position and have this. So while you're shooting, you can shift on the fly. On the fly, right. Wow. So <clears throat> let's just look to say, let's say I'm gonna shoot off of a, uh, of a, uh, like a prop that's uh, like a barricade type prop. Okay. Very common. I'm gonna put my bipod actually back here. All right. So we just slide this out of the way. Run this, no I'm gonna problem. run this all the way back. And let's just say that this, this bench here is exactly that. I'm gonna jam this thing right in here using the bipod. Oh, you're locking it in place. Exactly. I'm locking the rifle in place. The using bipod the becomes a hook. <laughs> yeah. It's actually wedging it in there. Really giving me a rock solid setup, which I normally wouldn't be able to get. In fact, so rock solid that when I get into the gun, I can actually support the gun into the into the. Uh, you're just prop, leaning, leaning into it. And I could lean into it. I could actually get off of the gun, which I do some. I, sometimes I think of the rifle as a big pistol. Okay. I actually get off it and just I take the. I get on the trigger guard. I'm pushing in. I'm off the stock. I'm looking, and by not be divorcing myself from the gun, I've actually gotten all of my body signature out of the rifle. No heartbeat, nothing. Oh, wow. And then I'm using, I'm just aiming it. I'm perfecting my, I'm perfecting my aim, my, composing my shot, not even on the gun. See, so that's man, that's it's like it's right? like you're cheating, man. It's, it's so yes. steady. And then, any stock that's got a rail feature back there. Okay. Guess what? If I'm shooting off a roof prop, which is also a very common prop in almost any PRS series match, I can guarantee you that you're going to shoot off a roof somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I can mount that bipod, bipod back here, okay. fully extended. And now I've got this out on the edge of that roof prop. Right. And then I've extended my bipod in the back. And now I've created this three-point bearing on the gun. So you're, again. Reversing the position of the bipod there again, giving me almost a bench rest quality setup mm -hmm. on an otherwise unstable position. Wow. Yeah, so, that is. Yeah, I'm, I'm really loving this product. It's really improved my shooting. I've never seen anything like this. Never so, uh, seen anything like this at all. Yeah, it was it's a amazing. game changer for me. It looks so. like, uh, you know, something like a smartphone where you wonder how you live without it <laughs> exactly. after you've used it. Exactly. That's, what I'm, that's the way I'm feeling now. Yeah. It, so. it seems so obvious now. And, of course, I mean, you handle all the rest of this. You've got our barrels, our barrel kits, right. our complete handguard system with all the supplementary rails. You carry the compensators. And, by the way, we've they... completely revamped our compensator line. You're going to be seeing that come through very soon. Oh, excellent. We have excellent. a whole new line of competition compensators, which we have really spent the last year tweaking to get just that right combination of recoil reduction with muzzle thrust to give it absolutely neutral feel. And the people that have been using them so far are just loving those. So... Uh, all of this stuff, again, you know, whether you're carrying the complete rifles or whether you're looking at this as a parts tree that breaks down to the, all those components that you can build a fantastic rifle out of, Brownells has them. Uh, just check out their website. It's been great to be here at 2017 SHOT Show. Steve, thanks for having me. It's been really great. Um, you know, I work on the tech line answering calls a lot of the time, and people ask about your parts a lot when they're building, doing a build, right. and they always fall into one of two camps. <laughs> There are guys that use your stuff and love it, and there are guys that wish they used your stuff. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the only two I've known. Anyway, thanks for being here. You bet. And thank you for watching. This is our last segment from SHOT Show 2017. We'll see you next time.